Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. I went to the University of Washington. I studied business. Now I'm a comedian. My parents are ticked. <laughs> School bell, classroom. How does that make you feel when you hear that? Whoa, hello bitterness. Wow, you guys responded. I've asked a ton of people that question and the answer is never good when you hear it, is it? I get anxiety, nausea, anger, sadness. And why do we put ourselves through this? We spent a third of our lives, 20 years, if you count preschool and college, to when you get out. And there's no guarantee you guys are gonna make it when you get out. <laughs> oh, older ladies laughing at that one. There is no guarantee you're gonna make it when you get out. I've been out for 20 years, and I realized the teachers did not teach us the right stuff. They didn't. Not once have I used a quadratic equation. Yep. I've never climbed a rope outside of gym class. Yep. The last thing I wanna do when I hear a fire alarm is get in a single file line and not talk. <laughs> 20 years of your life in school, not one minute on how to actually have a successful relationship with your spouse. Not one minute on how to raise a child successfully. Isn't that crazy? So I'm gonna show you guys, I will teach you for all the things they're not teaching you, okay? I'm gonna show you, this is how your life goes down and what your teachers are not teaching you in school, all right? And I don't care who you are or where you're from, everybody has the same life. It's the same thing. It starts out at about age 16. 16, you say to yourself for the first time, oh, I need to get a job one day. So I'm gonna have to work real hard at a skill to make money. But you know what? I wanna make a lot of money. So I'm gonna work and work and work for years to become an expert at a skill. And then one day, out of the blue, I get a relationship going. Now I've got to keep the job going because she needs a lot of money. <laughs> but now, not only do I have to be an expert at my job, all of a sudden I have to be an expert at relationships. This is hard. <laughs> she wants me to be masculine yet sensitive. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be Tom Cruise or Tom Cruise. <laughs> then we bought a house. Now I have to be a plumber, I have to be an electrician, I have to be a landscape artist, I have to be an expert at taxes. Now we have children. Now I'm a doctor, I'm a mentor, I'm a theologian, and all of a sudden I hear from my wife, honey, I don't get enough attention. There is no time! Oh! There's the bell right there. How did that bell make you feel? Not so good, perhaps. This time, same bell. This time it's a recess bell. Now how do you feel? Yeah. Let's have some fun. You wanna have a fun recess real quick, yes? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I got a new thing I wanna show you guys. You guys are awesome. Watch closely, watch closely. I got a ping pong ball here. My mouth up here, ping pong ball. My mouth, watch closely. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna fit your ball in the air now. <laughs> for you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no. What? Now I'm gonna do what two people are going to It's a living. <laughs> Here we go.
Bell, back to class. I know, I know, look at this. Look at this. Sitting in the class, no fun. Work, classroom, crazy. Why did I spend 20 years of my life doing this? When I think about it, no joke, my life is based on what I learned at recess in the fifth grade. I'm not kidding, that's where I learned how to juggle and that is my career now. My life is based on what I learned at recess. I don't use anything I learned in the classroom. Isn't that crazy? I learned how to juggle at recess. I went on and at 15 years old, I set a world record on the Jerry Lewis telethon for juggling. At 19 years old, I took fourth in the world in an international competition, went on to have a great career as an entertainer. Don't use anything from the classroom, all from the playground. And when you really think about it, I think the way we played on the playground shaped what we chose to do for a living. I found some old home movies of me on the playground, and uh, I found out all my friends grew up and chose the careers you would expect by how they played. Do you want to take a look? Okay, here we go, right here. Oh, first guy was the bully in school. He's punching the other kid in the back, chasing him. He's now in management. Oh, dodgeball, that was Doug Floatie, and he loved to hurt other people. Look, he wings the ball in, and then he laughs when he hurts them. He loved it when he hurt people. He's now a dentist. <laughs> oh, my word. Stephen Hunt lost his glasses every day. Get him while he's down. <laughs> Nail him while he can't see. Pick on the weak. He's now an air traffic controller. <laughs> Look at that. Julie Green just got hit by the ball, and she keeps denying it. Look at that. She was hit by the ball again. They're telling her she's wrong, and she keeps denying it. She's now a lawyer. <laughs> How about that, huh? Pretty funny, right? She is a lawyer, and I am a juggler. <laughs> recess was crazy, though, wasn't it? Wasn't recess crazy? Do you miss it? You do, don't you? I felt alive at recess. I felt so alive, because remember, we ran out to recess, but we walked back in. <laughs> Why don't we treat every day of our lives like it's recess? I think we should. I'm not the only guy thinking this way. Change agent and author David Baum says this, a company that has fun, where employees put cartoons on the wall and celebrate is spirited and creative, is usually more profitable. What? A company that's more fun is more profitable? You mean I can have a career, be successful, and have fun? And you know what? A lot of Fortune 500 companies are now adopting this into their culture. Check these pictures out. This is Google Zurich. That is a slide in the middle of office in Google Zurich. How cool would that be? Like, let's take the elevator. No way, I'm taking the slide. <laughs> we gotta go upstairs. I don't care, I'm climbing up the slide. I would use it constantly. Oh my gosh, check this one out. This is Google Dublin. Look how bright and vibrant the colors they are. Giant beanbag chairs. Look how creative the lighting is and the art on the wall. Do you think that makes their employees more creative? I bet it does. Check this one out. This is Google Docs. That is called the fun floor. Who wouldn't want to work there, right? Oh my gosh, and you'd think, oh, maybe Google's losing money because everybody's goofing off. No, I think Google actually is onto something here. I think they get more productivity out of their employees by doing this, right? Let me tell you guys a little secret here. I don't know if you know this. At the age of four, a four-year-old laughs up to 300 times a day. Those are my kids right there, laughing all the time as kids. 300 times a day as a kid. By the time you are 40, it turns into 15. <laughs> 15 times a day. What happened? Where did the laughter go? And I started thinking about it. You know what? A four-year-old doesn't, it's, life is just recess. That's all they do is have fun. You get to school and it's work, work, work. We got recess for a little bit. Work, work, work. Recess for a little bit. Now in high school, you guys don't have recess. By the time you're an adult, it's never going to happen. And I think that's why adults invented Las Vegas. <laughs> but what? <laughs> Right? But fun is important. Research is now showing how important fun is. Check this out from helpguide.org. Laughter is a powerful antidote to stress, pain, and conflict. Nothing works faster or more dependably to bring your mind and body back into balance than a good laugh. 
humor lightens your burdens, inspires your hopes, connects you to others, keeps you grounded, focused, and alert. And I know a lot of you are buying this and going, that's great. And some of you are sitting there going, well, Ron, that's really easy for you to say. Just have fun and be recessed and be crazy because you're a comedian. That's what you do. I'm saying you can do it in any job you want. Like, let's pick, the, what's the most boring job in the world? Accounting? Accounting? Right? Just a bunch of numbers. How do you have fun with numbers? Let's have some fun with some numbers right over here, okay? What could the numbers be? Nine minus six is three. What could the number three be? How about um, the degree of burn on my thigh after my Samsung Galaxy blew up? How about that? Uh, two times 112, that'd be 224. How about the uh, average SAT score from a student at Westlake? <laughs> Did we hit a nerve? Uh, three and three, that's a six. Uh, what could that be? The number of times I had to explain this last joke at Westlake. <laughs> and then some of you are going, well, Ron, well, Ron, uh, you can't always have fun. And, you, and I go, well, where? And they go, well, how about at a funeral? And I go, yeah, what are the first three letters of the word? All seriousness, though, when I've been at funerals, I've actually had some of the biggest laughs of my life. And I think it's because your emotions are connected. You are emotionally grounded there. And then somebody says something, and it hits you so hard, it's a big laugh. And that's just like at recess. You remember everything at recess because you were emotionally engaged. You had adrenaline going. You remember the rules of the game. You remember who was playing, and you remember who was a jerk. But you got back into a classroom where you weren't emotionally connected, and it all just went away. Think of your favorite teacher right now. Who is your favorite teacher? I guarantee you they're either funny. Don't say it. They're either funny or, or they're energetic. One or the other could get you emotionally involved. Well, Ron, you know, you can have fun and all that, but uh, you can't have fun in a time of extreme pain. Oh, yeah? Here's how my family dealt with it right here. Yes, it is what you're thinking. That is my wife giving birth on the right. I'm standing on the left. It's 3.34 in the afternoon. My daughter was born at 3.36, two minutes from now. My wife just finished contraction. She's in pain. Let's see how funny I am. Heaven, my baby. What a lovely way. <laughs> See, I got her again. Oh, Look at that. She's laughing. She's giving birth and laughing. That's not supposed to happen. But you know what happens with laughter? It becomes contagious. Jokes start flying around the horn. I'm not kidding. The doctor makes a joke. You can't hear it. And then the nurse is going to make a joke. Listen to this. My dad is so embarrassing. <laughs> and then my wife has the last joke. Sweetheart. <laughs> sweetheart, my wife's making a joke right there. That's not supposed to happen in extreme pain. But then watch, here it is. Two minutes later, my life is forever changed. Look at that. It's now, it's now my wife, my daughter, and me. It's my wife, my daughter, and me. I got a team now. I got my own team. Just like at recess, we were always picking teams, weren't we? Remember what it was like to be the first pick and how great that was? Remember how horrible it was to be the last pick? Don't ever let the people you love feel like they're the last pick. Not your family, not your friends, not your colleagues. Yeah. Recess! Can I show you guys another trick? Can I show you a trick? Okay, okay, I've been working on this for a while. I hope it works. I'd like to thank Jay Leno for teaching me how to do that trick. <laughs> how cool is that for a recess? Pretty cool, huh? Isn't life great, man? Always treating life like recess and having fun and 
goofing off, and that's kind of been my life. But there was one time in my life, there was, that uh, probably wasn't the easiest to have fun. It was the year my father died. I was seven years old, and that's a tough age. I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody in here who's gone through that, and I know what you went through. Or you might be going through it right now, and I understand. See, I'm the baby of eight kids. And God blessed me with great parents because two of the kids in my family were adopted. But my parents never told us which, which two. <laughs> That'll mess you up. Just talking that over with my brother, Lee Fong. And, uh... <laughs> he thought it was Abdul, I thought it was the twins. I You know, I didn't really know my dad very well because um, I was so young and uh, he wasn't around, not because he didn't want to be, but he had to work really, really hard to support all those kids. So my dad would usually leave. Before I got up in the morning and come home after I went to bed. But what I do remember of my dad is when he was around, man, we played. We just played. He would get all the kids in the neighborhood to make a baseball game. One time, actually, at the pool down the street where we all swam, he actually got them to stop adult swim so 10 of us could play ball tag. Of course, he wanted to play too because he loved to play, but I couldn't believe he actually got them to stop adult swim. He just loved to play. My favorite game was a game called Kick the Can because you could play till way till after dark, and that way I got my dad just a little bit longer. I recently went through his desk and I found this poem and I read the poem over and I went, man, that's how my dad lived his life. The poem goes like this. The master in the art of living draws no distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he is doing and leaves it up to others to decide whether he is working or playing. To himself, he's always doing both. So if I could leave you guys with anything, it would be this. We ran to recess, but we walked back in. So next time you hear that bell, and you will, it's coming. Which one are you going to choose? Run to life. It's your recess. God bless you all.